In this video, I'm gonna share five top tips to help you get the best image quality from your Insta360 for when you go out on your next moto ride. But before we do, this video is sponsored by Insta360. Be sure to check out the link in the description below to see what Insta360 has to offer and potentially save yourself some sweet, sweet cash. Or at least pick yourself up a free gift when using my affiliate link. Tip number one, settings. Keep it simple. With Insta360, I shoot in full auto mode, 5.7K, 30 frames, vivid color profile, auto white balance with EV set to zero. Now, if you really like to grade your footage, set your color profile to log. I used to shoot in log color profile all the time, but I've recently switched to the vivid color profile, especially when using the X3. I find that the colors are just spot on. I just do a bit of contrast in post and that's it. Also to capture even more detail on the shadows and highlights, switch over to active HDR. It works really well and looks amazing. Just avoid using active HDR in low light conditions. Tip number two, clean your damn lens. It may sound super obvious. This is probably the most important tip because without a clean lens, no matter which settings you punch in or how epic the content is that you're capturing, having a dirty lens with so much as a thumbprint will ruin that epic shot that you've planned so long for. Always carry the lens cloth supplied with your Insta360 wherever you go and get in the habit of cleaning the lens every time you remove the lens guard so that you'll capture your content dust, smudge, or water droplet free. If it's raining out, just be mindful that a tiny water drop on the lens takes up a lot of screen space when watching back. It can be used as an effect to show how wet it was on your ride, but don't expect to capture your wet ride clearly. If riding in the dirt, I found that one lens gets dirtier than the other, which isn't ideal. Be mindful of this and increase your lens cleaning intervals. Tip number three. <laughs> Shoot at the right time of day. Most of the time, this is out of our control. But if you have the option, try heading out for golden hour. Golden hour is the time roughly one hour from when the sun rises and one hour before the sun sets. The sun shines through the dust on the horizon and gives us that beautiful golden hue. In addition to this, we also get really nice long shadows which adds to the dynamic contrast. But be warned, the sun waits for nobody. Don't go chasing the sun, be prepared. Be at your location at least half an hour before the sun is gonna hit golden hour. Because once it hits golden hour, time just, it goes, man. It disappears. I've been in that boat. I think, you know, many photographers have been on that boat. You don't wanna be on the boat. <laughs> You gotta be off that boat. You wanna be on your bike there, prepared, ready, setting up your shot, having your location sorted, your mounting position sorted, record, do a couple of laps, and then you know where you where the sun's gonna be and what what's what's sort of happening. Be prepared. Tip number four: mounting positions. I love to experiment with different mounting positions all around my bike. A general rule of thumb is if you'd like to capture the feeling of going fast while not actually having to go fast, mount the camera as low to the road as possible. Of course, be mindful how far you'll be leaning over and that your Insta360 is out of harm's way. The last thing you want to do is be leaning, you're just like, yeah man, this is sick, woohoo! And then you come back and you find that you've just like ground a whole part of your lens off, or even the side. I think I've even done it, I've tapped it, not in this one, on another one, and it just hit the corner of the camera. Thank goodness. It's very easy to do that. Get carried away. Get carried away. Mount your camera up high to capture the stunning landscape around you, or to capture your buddies riding alongside you. Now the stitch line is most visible when shooting subjects within 60 centimeters or 0.9 feet. Now obviously the Insta360 has two lenses, so this one's shooting 180 degrees here, the other one's shooting 180 degrees here. The stitch line is that part right here, zunk. So the closer you are, the more you're gonna just see that little whoop, little wobble, and that's the stitch line. You move it back, that stitch line pretty much disappears. To avoid the stitch line when shooting up close, face one of the Insta360 lenses directly at your subject or the area of importance. In this case, the front tire. When shooting further than 60 centimeters, try not to exceed the first two extensions on your selfie stick, especially while riding bumpy or winding roads. This will help with the inevitable wobble factor. If you're riding down a straight, somewhat smooth road, then try taking it out a notch and maybe a notch more. Just make sure the clamp is secure enough to handle the weight. There's been many times when I've had it out and I've just gone over a little bump and it just starts going, woo, especially on my handlebars and it starts sliding down. If you can and you have something to mount it to that's the opposite way, like this, and then you put your clamp on it like that, so it's not gonna slide down or anything, you can only go left or right, then definitely mount it at that angle. But I don't know what that would be. Um, maybe your mirror. Mm, getting too heavy for a mirror. Maybe, maybe the triple clamp. No, nah, that wouldn't be, that's not big enough. No, handlebar riser, maybe. If your handlebar risers are huge, then definitely try that out. Uh, if you have like engine bars or upper, upper engine casing bar things, and one's going uh, vertical, 
Can I add on to that? That'll work. And finally, tip five. So once we've done all this, you've cleaned your lens, you've gone out for your ride, done the shoot, golden hour, boom, 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 mounting, everything's sweet. Editing. These are the, this is the editing tip. Tip five, editing. Subtlety and smooth motion help improve the viewer's experience. If you'd like to change the camera angle using keyframes, experiment with different kinds of transitions that are available. This is using the studio one. My favorite is fade in, fade out, as this gives an almost seamless smooth transition between angles. Use static shots as standard angles. Just because the Insta360 captures everything in a 360 degree bubble, doesn't mean you need to use it all in one go. Pick one angle, set your field of view and export. Then go back and find your next angle and export and so on. To lock your writing angle, make sure to toggle on direction lock. This makes the camera angle lock in the direction that you want it to without moving when you're turning corners. This is the very first thing I toggle when I import a file for editing. For maximum export quality using a mobile device, choose custom export settings and choose the highest resolution and bitrate. The highest resolution using the mobile app is 1080p, which is fine for social media. To export in 4K, use the desktop studio app. Hit the export button to bring up the export settings window, then import 3840 by 2160 into resolution manually. That's your 4K resolution. Use ProRes if you're using Final Cut Pro, a H.265 with max bitrate for everything else. And then save these settings as a preset for future use. Super handy, super good, super fun. Enjoy the editing process, baby. There we have it, five top tips that I use, that I share with everybody that needs help with Insta360 cameras. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in next week's vid. Also, by the way, don't forget to hit the link in the description below to see what sales and what things are going on with Insta360. There's always something. There's always something, well not always, but there's, there's something all the time. Not all the time, but you know, <laughs> I'm gonna go now. Ciao.